I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so excited to be talking about NBC's American Auto. We are joined today by the wonderful Justin Spitzer, who's the creator and showrunner of the series, and Ex Mayo, who plays the beloved Carrie character Dory. Um, and Justin, I wanted to start by asking a little bit about the workplace setting and the really unique way that that allows you to craft narratives and character dynamics. Um, you know, because obviously you've worked extensively on shows like Superstore and The Office, and there's that really beautiful chaos that comes from the pressure cooker situation mm -hmm. of the fact that you have these characters that probably wouldn't choose to be in a room together under other circumstances. But at the same time, there's also a really unique closeness that comes from the amount of time that you spend with people when you're working together as well. And so I was interested in when you're writing the show and when you're working on scripts, that dichotomy of how it really allows you to create conflict, but also really allows you to create a lot of closeness and emotional warmth in the series as well. Yeah, I mean, man, you put it better than I think I could. That's, uh, but yeah, that, that's always the, the, the shows I'm drawn to, at least uh, working on and often watching, um, because it's exactly as you said, a workplace, you have people that don't necessarily want to be spending time together and have to, but they're spending more time with each other than they are with their family, with their friends, with their loved ones, uh, all within that high pressure situation. So that's just, uh, it, it gives you so much more opportunity for, for conflict and mm -hmm. you get comedy out of conflict. Um, you know, and there's also just, there's relatable workplace tropes. There's, you know, every, we've all had a boss. We all know there's office politics and rivalries and hierarchies and bureaucracy. So you have that as sort of a, uh, a jumping off point uh, that people can latch into, onto, but then, you know, then you have uh, endless options for variety based on, you know, the characters and the situations and, and, and our workplace is different than a lot of other workplaces. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but yeah, I really enjoy workplace comedy. Yeah. You know, one of the great things in terms of, of character and performance in terms of that for UX is if you take Dory, you have the ability to, you know, do the character development that you always do with scripts. But then mm -hmm. in an ensemble like this, there's so many different types of character dynamics. You know, yes. Catherine coming in as her boss and the fact that they haven't worked together for very long. You know, maybe she knows Sadie and Cyrus. That she's got a different dynamic with them. There's mm -hmm. a little bit of lack of patience with uh, Wesley at times. Oh, really? <laughs> I hadn't noticed. <laughs> yeah. You know, and so I was really interested when you were developing her as a character and, and mm -hmm. working with the scripts, how you also were really thinking consciously about some of the nuanced elements of the different sides of her that come out with each of these different characters. And also then once you were on set filming, how you really find that with your castmates. Yeah, I think um, we had such great chemistry behind the scenes. Like we really, really love each other. It's like, I know it's so cliche, but like Justin did a great job. I don't know if he did like, you know, a different like character test like if we were all crazy or something because I'm just like how is no one a diva everyone's amazing and so I think once I kind of realized like who they were as people and then I got their POV as characters I tried to figure out as best as I could about what would Dory's character game be with the different characters and how I could kind of like set them up for a joke um, or like different things that I knew that I wanted to do or play with some jokes I would hold because I wanted to get like a genuine reaction, you know, from them once we started performing um, on set. So yeah, so when I built her out, I wanted to really figure out who she was and I mean, from the pilot, I knew exactly. And then I was like, okay, what has Justin and all the writers created that was so great that I can just like add to that. And so when I built her out, I just really wanted to make sure that she was like definitive, knew who she was. She says what she means. She means what she says. And um, sometimes she shouldn't say some things, but, <laughs> but, um, but she's committed to it. Even if it's a mistake, she did it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that is something we try to do in, in casting that I've tried to do. I mean, you, you know, the, the actor comes in with their performance. Um, I always ask our cast directors, to, uh, to let me know when someone has an improv background because I really love improv on set. And not everybody does, and some people figure it out, but mm -hmm. that's the pl plus. And where possible, I do my due diligence calling people who've worked with them, and you want people who are cool and are just yeah. gonna enjoy being with each other. Nothing's gonna kill a set. Nothing's gonna like just prevent any kind of comedy from, from coming out more than just a diva or someone who is uh, just make a bummer to be around. Yeah. So. And because you are creating this space where you've got, you know, incredibly well-written scripts, really robust characters, and then you're also shooting with three cameras with that improv element, what's kind of the general setup of how you're filming a lot of the scenes in terms of 
working on a lot of large ensemble scenes and being able to have so many character moments happening at once. You know, sometimes they're in the foreground, sometimes there's background moments that are really moving the story forward, telling us more about character. What's kind of the general dynamic of how that plays out when you're actually on set shooting scenes? Um, well, I'll go for it. I mean, I'd actually, this year has been a little atypical because of COVID and, and, how, and uh, because we've been sort of trying to figure out the look of, of the show in terms of um, what is our coverage, what is our style, um, and so I, we have, we've definitely done some improv and mm -hmm. I'm hoping we'll be able to do much more in the future. I know on the Superstore we always did a, a lot. Uh, and I always say, in theory, the script should be the safety net. You know, it, the, the episode will not come off less funny than the script. But I want actors who are hilarious like, like X and, and, and the rest of our cast to, to go from there. And, you know, sometimes that's just rewording it and putting it into the way they would say it to make it feel natural. And sometimes that's adding a joke um, and also being cool, you know, at adding a joke and the writer on set being, I don't think that worked as well. Go back to this. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that happens. Um, uh, but, yeah, because partly because of COVID and you don't get as many takes uh, per scene. Yeah. Um, and the particulars of our show, you know, we, we have a moving camera, the camera has to, so we want the camera to be able to catch the right, the right part of a line and, and between figuring out our coverage and we end up shooting this year, this previous year, we shot too much coverage. I think as we figured out our style, um, that eats into the amount of improv time. But I think we did still oh my give God. you guys some of those. Listen, if me and John are on a set, and humps. Oh my God, fucking humps. He's, oh, excuse me, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, we can do it. We oh, can oh, fuck, we can fucking do it. Humps. The internet. Fucking, humps. Humps. fucking yeah. humps. Everybody. Fucking humps. No, I'm just like, um, <laughs> But yeah, if we're on a set, we're going to get in because we're so quick. It's not like, well, let me go off and think of a joke. Let me go off and let me, uh, uh, uh. So we don't take up time. It's just in me to do it because, like, that's our base reality. Like, so. I think like I got every joke that I wanted to say. Now, did it make it on air? No, because every joke wasn't appropriate or fit. I just, but I'm gonna try. And I feel like that's, I want to help bring out the best and make an amazing show. Not saying that all of my jokes will help it be amazing, but from what I say, maybe the premise of it was good, but the punchline wasn't good. And then Justin can be like, well, let's change this. Or maybe I have a great punchline. And Justin was like, well, maybe if you come in and you held this like this and then you said it, you know? So it's just kind of like, I want to help add to that. So I'm always going to pitch. And it, if it gets shut down, it gets shut down. That's just the name of the game. But you'd be surprised how often I, I go to the ad libs in, in editing. I mean, it just, yeah, it's, I've seen it. Yeah, a, lot, it <laughs> a lot of ours. We got to play. And to see that felt good because I felt so supported by Justin and by like all of the producers and everyone who's in charge. Because I was just like, you know, you don't know if it's working. And then, you know, Justin's got on that mask. I'm like, is he laughing? Was it good? I don't know. And so, um, so to see it happen, I'm like, oh my God. It just, it felt like, okay, so he's a proud papa. He's, <laughs> we're, we're doing good. We're doing something good. That is one of the hardest parts of filming during COVID is like, it, it, it must feel like there's no feedback. Like I'm smiling, I'm laughing. And even though yeah. I'm not making sounds if it was not COVID, I'm smiling so you guys know I'm really into it. Yeah. But when that's covered by a mask, it must just feel like... Uh, yeah, you know. and also too, like being a performer, I'm used to the crowd either clapping or booing, you know, okay? <laughs> so, but even to know like just an immediate reaction, the fact that I couldn't necessarily see that, but then Justin, I think he kind of felt how nervous some of us were, especially me. And he would be like, no, X, that was good. Or that was funny. Or like Jeff will like lift up his hands. And I'm like, okay, I don't know if he's praying or if he's happy. <laughs> he's like, what the fuck is she doing? I never got a sense you were nervous once ever. Oh my God, Justin, I was, was dying. <laughs> Every day in the trailer, I was like, I can't, Justin. And when, when I first booked it, I ran up to Justin and what I tell you, I said, you changed my life. Yep. I <laughs> squeezed him and I was like, oh my God, you just changed my life forever. So I was like, I cannot let him down. And the NBC casting has been so supportive. I was like, I have to do a good job. So yeah, so I'm so happy that you couldn't tell, but I was so no. nervous. No. Can't tell a little. Um, one of the other things I really, really love about the show is when you look at every scene and you kind of break down the comedy that's there, you've got the comedy that's in the writing, the comedy that is elevated within the performance, and then it feels like 
there's kind of an extra pass of like, well, what's what are the nuanced details that we can pull in? So if you take mm-hmm. Wesley and Catherine having a moment outside where oh my he God. misinterprets a romantic <gasps> move and then he pulls out chapstick, you know, it's like that tiny detail also adds another layer to the scene. And so it's interested in terms of the writing and the performance, how that kind of third pass kind of comes through and how you're always thinking about every corner of the frame and where you can just add that extra little nuanced detail that might elevate the scene even further. Uh, well, the chapstick that was uh, that was in the script. Um, yeah, I mean, it is it is trying to be open uh, to uh, comedy suggestions from the director and, and and just anyone who has an idea to elevate things. I know for me, almost any time there's a uh, a dry erase board in a scene on this show on Superstore, oh I'm God. I'm always trying to figure out. I'm like, mm-hmm. someone's gonna pause it and and look at what's there. So you know, I, I don't go crazy, but I always want to try to add some jokes there. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's just kind of the fun is, is finding these little Easter eggs for people where possible and finding ways, like I said, to, to heighten it. Yeah. And sometimes it doesn't work, but it's like you just try. Like there was a, a moment when we were doing the call and Sadie was stalling. She was like, let's just honor the people who have died. And so I had pitched for me to because in my community, in the black community, we pour liquor out. On, on the ground for whoever has passed. So I was like, can I have a club soda to pour some out when she talks about the people? And so it was like, we only had one shot to way to get it. I didn't have it in the right way. It was like, it just didn't work, but it was just like, we're always looking for that. We're always trying to find that moment. And I feel like too, one way we find so much comedy is in the reactions. Mm-hmm. And you guys did an amazing job with that, especially with Michael Benjamin Washington, his reactions, he is fucking over it. <laughs> Every yeah. scene, he's just like, okay, like, wh- who are these? How did you get hired? And we're just like, come on, Cyrus. He's like, no. So I love that he, like, is the straight man. So I think even in those moments, like, calls for so much comedy in the show. Yeah. You know, and one of the other things I wanted to ask you about, Justin, is something that you said that you really learned on Superstore, which is you obviously have to have story moving forward, be adding character detail for the audience, but that Superstore really taught you to also allow yourself to have scenes where it's just about the characters hanging out and it's just about the dynamic in the moment. And so taking that lesson into American Auto, what are some of the particular standout scenes where that's really been the case for you, you know, where we're still Mm -hmm. learning so much, we're still getting to enjoy these characters, but it may not be about the A plot or the B plot. Huh. It's hard. Well, I mean, when I think of our second episode, we had this this little runner where, where Cyrus, Michael Benjamin Washington, just knows a lot about serial killers. And it's like, it had nothing to do with anything, but I just <laughs> knew, like, it just made me laugh a lot that he had this weird bit of knowledge. And it, it, it's a little character um, ex- exploring, not that he's a person who knows about serial killers, but, oh, maybe he's a person who reads a lot and wants you to know that he's reading a lot. Like, so I think there is some distinct character stuff there. Um, but uh, I think that little runner, um, oh God, I'm sure. Definitely in the nice. final episode, when we were all sitting there talking to Catherine and she was just like, it was so erotic for her to fucking drive a car. And we were all sitting there like and talking to her. Like, I think there's like different pockets because I think we, the, the goal of like always having something to do in the scene as far as work related is important because it's a workplace comedy. But I definitely feel like that moment, the other moment, uh, I think it's the same episode when we were all talking and she had been in the office for so long. We were like, what the hell is she doing? Mm-hmm. Um, and even in the first episode, me, uh, Cyrus, and um, and Humps, where Elliot's, Elliot's uh, character were talking um, there after, like, we were wondering, like, why is Catherine here? What should she do? So I think we have our, like, little side moments and stuff like that where you can just see us just, like, shoot the shit. And also, I mean, it, there's a sort of, um, you know... It's like purist writer idea of like, you have to be willing to kill your children. Like sometimes you have to let a joke go if, it, if it's not serving story. And that's true, um, but not, not always. Like there are certain jokes that I think are so strong or that give you this little window into the character that maybe it's find a way to, to keep that in. You know, it, it, the easiest thing as like a cool writer is be like, that doesn't help story. Let's just ditch anything that doesn't help story. But like. We're a comedy, we're making people laugh. And if it's funny enough to do that, then maybe there's a reason it should be there. It's different if it actually goes against story. And definitely if it's something that sells out character, I think you always cut those moments. Um, But uh, you want those little moments of, of, of chaos, I think. Yeah. 
And in terms of Dory as a character, one of my favorite things to watch with her is the way that everybody comes and unloads to her all the time.、Mm -hmm. And they don't necessarily give her the space to do the same back.、Mm -mm. But because of that, she is the gatekeeper of probably the most information out of everybody、oh, yeah. in that space. But she also knows emotionally where every character is at、mm -hmm. at every point. And so, how have you wanted to make sure that she's always a very observational character, a really key listener, and then to find those moments where she uses that information that she's gleaned from other scenes?、Um, I think.、Um, In the moments where people are talking to her, like I always just like look them in the eye, especially when it's on my coverage. Like look at them, look at them, look at them, and then、um, she she throws a little shade because sometimes if you're saying something that she wants to keep to use later, she's like, mm hmm, mm hmm, you know. Tell me more.、And、so yeah, 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 yeah. And so I I think too. I think she is. I think she is the chamber of secrets too because I think sometimes、uh, Dory gets scared. Like you know, like. Is she gonna keep her job? You know, sometimes too, and I think that's why she's so focused on Catherine. Because I think she cares about Catherine. I think your characters have to have heart. You know, they、mm -hmm. have to care. Because if 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 no one gives a shit, and it's just like, okay, well then, why are we watching the show? So I think she cares too. She cares about herself, but she's like, whatever y'all do is gonna affect me and my money. And I also know that like Wesley is is a damn idiot, and so he needs to be protected. And you saw that really. Endearing moment、um, at the、uh, at the charity dinner episode where I was just like, yeah, you know, your family's kind of kind of disgusting, you know. And he just just kind of like, oh, so it was kind of like him entering the gang. And even though I know I was there when、uh, Wesley's character and his、uh, actual real brother were like going at it, so I have all of that information. But still, at the end, I didn't use it on him. I didn't say, yeah, so your brother got you really good. I just was kind of like. Yeah, I feel bad for you, and and you can come with us. Like you're now like in the gang. Yeah. And the thing about also Dory is like,、uh, if you look at Dory's title compared to every all the other characters, you know she's an, an assistant or a, a, a I don't we never get assistant to secretary whatever. Yeah, you want. yeah. yeah.、Uh, it, she probably makes I'm sure she makes far less money than any of the other characters, but she's not lower status than any of the other characters、mm -hmm. because she has、uh, you know she she decides who gets in to see Catherine and she knows where the bodies are buried and just the strength that X brings to the to the role. So you would not call that a weak character, despite the fact that on paper maybe you'd say she should be lower status than、mm -hmm. the others. Absolutely, and in terms of of Catherine as a character as well, what's really brilliant about the way that you've written her is she is inept at making certain choices, but she's not an inept person.、Mm -hmm. You know, she really is quite an intelligent woman.、Mm -hmm. She knows how to take action, but she's just been thrown into the deep end as CEO in an industry that she knows nothing about. And like we saw in the finale, she doesn't even know how to drive a car.、Mm -hmm. You know, that's the level of information that she's coming in at. And so, was it really important to you at the beginning that it was the comedy came from just not knowing certain pieces of information, and it's never kind of punching down on her as a character? Yeah, I, we never thought of her as a dumb character. She's someone who is she is great at the politics of of corporate life, and I think she does know the corporate world. And yeah, you you get comedy out of people making mistakes, and she's the person in charge, so she's going to to, to make mistakes、uh, sometimes. And I think over time we'll start to get more windows into what makes her good at her job, bits of competence,、um, uh, bits of you know acuity. But、um, but yeah, she's. We are sometimes punching the character. We're putting her in difficult situations and seeing how she gets out of it because that's all drama and that's definitely comedy.、Mm -hmm. But、uh, yeah, we we've never viewed her as in any way dumb. She she has the skills required to be a great CEO. And within the workplace setting, you know, kind of going back to what we were talking about at the beginning, you have that really great, unique pressure cooker situation for these characters. But there are episodes where we step outside of the office and we go to different spaces, and each one has a different dynamic. You know, whether it's a charity dinner, whether they're visiting a plant somewhere, whether they're shooting a commercial, all of those allow us to explore the characters in different ways.、Mm. Um, You know, but it feels like you're very judicious and very careful narratively about when is the right moment to do that. And so, for you, what is the right moment to take the characters outside of the workplace setting in a workplace comedy? Well, I mean, it's funny. I really, what dictates that is is budget more than anything. I mean, we just can't <laughs> afford to go out that often.、Um, but it was very important to me coming from, from from Superstore, where almost every episode took place in the store, and so we knew like. It doesn't make sense to follow them places. Let's put all our money into that insanely、uh, big set. For this, I wanted this to feel like it could be anywhere. I wanted to see the private jets and the cool dinners, and、um, uh, you know, we have so many more ideas for places we'd love for them to go. You know, in the same way, I think of、uh, we reference 
Succession a lot in the room. And, and that show, yeah, you see their office, but it lives in a million places around the world and we don't have the budget of Succession, so we'll be in the office mm -hmm. a little more. But um, that's it. And then, but within that knowing that we can go only go out a few times, uh, uh, I like trying to spread it out. I mean, we went out of the office three times this season and two of them were in a row just because that's the way it sort of made sense mm -hmm. narratively. But uh, in theory, the ideal I think would be uh, spread it out because it's a fun way to break things up. Mm -hmm. There's also a lot of fun in, in watching characters in those moments, and everybody does it, where they're overcompensating a little bit. Because again, it, it's still in the way it's written and the way it's performed, always comes back to these grounded emotional moments for characters of why are they overcompensating? And, you know, I mean, Wesley's the perfect example of, of, of overcompensating. I was asked to be CEO. It's very clear that he wasn't. And it's about the insecurities. It's about his fi family dynamic trying mm -hmm. to prove himself. Um, and so I was interested in, in how you've wanted to shape the characters in those spaces where they're trying to have little overconfidences for some of the vulnerabilities within them and also for Dory, kind of what you view those to be within her. Um, well, I think probably pretty much any workplace, you. you, you you're always probably thinking about what you give off. You know, I think all these people probably have, uh, are maybe Dory less than Sun Mothers, but mm -hmm. um, thinking about how am I coming across? What is that image? Wanting to support that, uh, and everybody has those insecurities. I imagine uh, Elon Musk must have that, and, and you know, and, and and Bezos, and everyone probably has some some little voice nagging in the back of their heads, being like, I don't want people to know how little I really know in this particular moment or how unsure I am about that. So I think that's um, uh, pretty typical. I'm sorry, did that answer the question? I can't remember. It did, it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Um, yeah. So for Dory, so you were asking, what do I feel her insecurities are? Yeah, and like, but sometimes she'll kind of have a little bit more of a layer of confidence for so that other people don't see things within her. Um, I think uh, sometimes if she can't automatically present a solution to a problem. Um, I feel like she gets a little insecure because she's just like, okay, I don't wanna look bad in front of Catherine. I don't wanna look bad in front of the rest of the group. Um, uh, I have a pitch. Um, let's talk about my grandmother who just, <laughs> you know, and she's just like, she just, she just like gets vomit of the mouth because she doesn't know like necessarily like what to say or what the right answer would be. But she's like, if I don't say something, they'll think I'm not contributing and she wants to be a good worker. So I think that, is one of her insecurities for sure that she uses to overcome the yeah. I mean, there's a really beautiful way that you've described her in the past, which is that she tends to make very full fixed actions and decisions based on temporary emotions. Mm -hmm. And so what's the fun in then getting to look at what are the actions and choices that she's making as, as a character and then having that moment where those choices kind of dawn on her and she's dealing with the repercussions of the path that she's chosen to go down. Yeah, I mean, uh, drinking Catherine champagne. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. She was like, well, I just knew she offered it to me to, you know, to drink it. And um, so then that's that permanent decision off that temporary emotion. And then all of a sudden she's like, Dory, can you get that very expensive bottle? So it wasn't just any bottle, it was an expensive bottle. And now Dory's just shuffling and rambling. And then uh, there, she's not getting any help from any of the other workers. She's, she's just like scrambling, trying to fix the problem. So then she kind of... She kind of gets her punishment when the machine explodes on her. Mm -hmm. But um, luckily, when she like lays it down flat, we never kind of see if people drunk it or like kind of like what happens with it. But she's just like, okay, I warned you. This tastes <laughs> funny. Y'all waited. This has nothing to do with me. So she's still like trying to like um, overcompensate and trying to like right her wrong um, when she when she drank the champagne. Yeah. And one of the other things with the writing that I was interested in is the, the journey in the game of unusual pairings, which goes back to your time on The Office, which was a very frequent thing of which are two characters that haven't spent as much time together and what would be a great moment that would naturally bring them together that makes sense for their characters. And, you know, obviously on American Auto, you're, you're servicing so many characters, but with such richness and doing that really allows the opportunity to explore different sides, going back to the way that we were talking about Dory at the beginning. And so what have been some of the moments of unusual pairings in American American Auto, and what are some of the ways that you feel like that's really helped to drive character forward for you? Um, let me think. It's funny that you referenced The Office because I was about to. I guess that's a known thing that Greg would always, that was a big brainstorming exercise. Is he would say, go off, what are unusual pairings we haven't seen? We had way more characters on that show. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and here, we'll use that sometimes as a brainstorming exercise. We still, on American Auto, like Superstore, try to have one incident, uh, one sort of inciting incident start the different stories off as opposed to totally independent storylines. We've done that once or twice, but, but more, so often that'll dictate 
what the pairings are, that, you know, th that thing that starts. So, you know, whether it's, it's the commercial episode or, or, or they're in the f a factory and, and like we have this one comic premise and then how that affects things. But um, yeah, I mean, I would say in, in, in 109, the, uh, the Dory Wesley pairing was, was one sort of unusual mm -hmm. one. We always knew we're like, we need to find a, an episode that really pairs them up. Uh, and I think in an earlier version of that episode, it really was much more the Dory Wesley story, and we had to pare it back a little bit. Yeah, um, is that when we were humping? We were humping. Remember, we were acting out um, uh, Sadie and. Um, oh no, that was that was one oh eight. Okay, that was when you guys were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we got we got to we got to fake like uh, Sadie and uh, and and Ty White's character Jack were like making out and doing it and me and uh, John were like really razzing him and we were just like oh yeah Sadie ooh ooh ah. we were just like and then I was like yo can we like go for it and everybody's just kind of like yeah and I'm like let's let's go um, and I think a usual pairing too is when um, Jack and Elliot when they were doing the negotiation yes, that's another one that was one. amazing because it's like Ty was like on like lower of the toting pole he like kind of rised up and he's trying to figure out his way as like you know an executive now and Elliot's really about his business and training and he's a lawyer so to see them kind of trying to do that and like negotiate um and then to see Jack like come through in the clutch for the for the team was like really exciting to see I think Dory Elliot with uh, the flipping the dog was another oh my god pairing. yes and it's oh, great wow it, it, it's great to put on the air it's great for the scripts but it's also kind of a brainstorming exercise just for the writers like as we sort of figure out the characters by seeing how they pair with different people and what that relationship is um you just give the character depth um and in that thing where you and and, and wesley are, are pumping like i love that moment too because like yes they have this relationship where she calls him out on his shit and it seems like it's a little antagonistic but then in the right thing comes along they're mm -hmm. like on the same side like yeah let's make fun of uh, of sadie together yeah you know, and i think that that's real i think people have uh, inconsistencies and you may, someone may drive you crazy, but then one day you have a really fun time with them. Yeah, it's like, well, Wesley and Dory, it's like, yeah, no, they don't rock with each other, but as soon as they have eyes on somebody that they both mutually don't like, it's like, yeah, we can both, we can we can be friends for these 30 seconds, for sure. Yeah. And I feel like Wesley and Dory are on like two sides of the extreme, but like, I feel like they come together on, on certain ends because it's just kind of like, when when I'm trying to like flip the dog and I'm doing my, doing my shit and I don't give a fuck and then he's over here talking to Jack he's like hey can you handle this and then he gets him like the um the the chain and stuff like that I feel like Wesley is ex just as extreme as Dory is mm -hmm. and I feel like that's how we were able to meet in the middle because it's like yeah you look crazy I'm a little crazy yeah we're gonna be crazy right now yeah. <laughs> And overall, with, with the comedy of the show, one of the things that you're so fantastic at and the way that you write characters and at comedy is that element that we were talking about a little bit earlier with Catherine, where we're able to laugh at things that characters are doing. We're able to laugh with them. Sometimes it's at certain things that they're doing, but there's always a really empathetic connection to what they're doing, the reason for it, what their personal motivations are and what their emotions are as a character. And what are the intricacies that come with writing comedy in that very specific way where it's, you know, it's never punching down on the character but maybe where they're kind of like laughing alongside them and a little bit at them, but never punching down. Um, it's funny because so much that, it, I think we, we, we try not to be too, think about that too much in the room because I never want the show to be soft. And I feel like we have this amazing cast and just by who they are and the way they perform the characters, they're going to get some empathy from the audience. So you can be, we can be a little harsher. We can have our characters say mean things to each other. Um, and. What, no matter how harsh we write it, they're going to bring it to a, a more real uh, and likable place. Um, so, you know, I, I think we're aware of like, sometimes you, you, you kill a character a little, like you, not kill, you, you have that character have a bad day, but don't, oh, don't keep kicking that character. You know, give them a win a, a, another time. Um, and I think we're generally good people and we, we, we like the characters as we write them. And, that's all you really have to do. As long as you're not writing it from like a hateful place, it, I think it just kind of comes through. Mm -hmm. Is that something that also channels through in terms of, of performance and character as well? Because Dory is such a perfect example of when she doesn't have time for something and someone's trying to slow her down when she's trying to figure out how to make champagne out of Chardonnay, mm -hmm. you know, 
unhelpful suggestion. She's not going to pause for them mm -hmm. and she'll shut it down. But it's not coming from a mean spirited place. And she still always leads from a place of kindness. And yeah. so is that something that is really important to you to stem through in terms of character as well? Yeah. And I think um, uh, kindness can be seen in like multiple ways. So it doesn't have to be like with me, like holding somebody. And I feel like even with the episode with Barb, it's like I was trying to help Barb because Catherine told me one thing and I'm also caring about Catherine. I'm like, no, Barb, you can't go in there. And it's just like, and then she's trying to be like nice about it. And then Barb keeps going and it's like, okay, you gotta go. You know, so she's, she's still being like, caring and she's still being loving but it's just like she has to be like assertive because especially when it's in the heat of the moment and I think that like that conflict that drives story is like she can't be timid about it it's like it's necessary it's immediate it's now I need help now you can't okay you gotta go yeah well I so appreciate both of you taking time today to talk so intricately about the series it's such a fantastic first season and you've done Yay. such amazing work on it thank you thank to you. both of you thank you so much for doing this this is great thank you so much